So do we live by the Spirit? That's the question, right? And, and if so, are we allowing ourselves to be guided by the Spirit? And can you n be living in the Spirit if you're not allowing yourself to be guided by it, right? Isn't that the, the big question? Okay, so I told you that I was going to start with Let It Go. So here's my, my fan art. I don't know exactly who, um, who made this, but I think it's beautiful that they, he or she did a wonderful job. Um, so I'm assuming most of us know the song, right? Sing with me, let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. Oh, come on, let it go, let it go, turn away and slam the door. Okay, so it's from Frozen. Uh, quick little commercial, I have nothing to do with this except I'm gonna go see it, but uh, Waterville Play Shop Junior uh, is doing, the kids show is doing uh, Frozen Junior. Uh, this past two weekend, it's nights, and then today at 2.30 is their last show. So uh, if you love Frozen, anybody who's watching and has kids or grandkids and you're free at 2.30, uh, head over there because you get to happen to see this. So it was just kind of coincidence that uh, this happened to, to be at the same time, but it made me think of it of like, yeah, let it go, right? So Elsa is talking about something very different. It's a Disney movie, right? Um, although there is, you know, there is a book, have I ever shared this with you? A book about church management using Disney principles. It's called The Church Mouse. And it's actually a pretty good book. It came out probably 15 years ago. Um, but it's really interesting kind of finding different parallels. Um, but anyway, um, so learning to let it go. So what does it mean to let go of something? Anybody just have to let go of something? Let, let that go. I, I let that go a long time ago. Yeah, Mila. Yeah, so physically to let go of something. So I have this in my hand, and I'm just letting my bulletin go, right? I'm just dropping it, right? Yeah, physically. Um, but that also <coughs> is something that we can do, right, mentally, because physically sometimes we have this huge weight on ourselves, right, and that we need to let it go, right, to just let it go. Because very often, again, if we're feeling that weight of holding on to something, um, that's not a good thing because we aren't able to be fully human, to be fully joyful, to be fully present with other people, um, to fully follow God's call in our lives. If we are feeling the, these other pressures, um, we need to let things go. Okay, so the elephant in the room, right? Uh, Roe versus Wade and everything that happened this week with that, right? I can't begin to tell you, and I know you know this, right, already, um, the different spectrum of people, right? Uh, it, probably in this room, probably around our country, right? And you know that. We've had people that were finally, we've been praying for this for how long? Thanks, thanks be to God, this has happened. We have other people of how could this have happened? This is not right. This is, you know, all those different things. So there are some things that we shouldn't let go of. Um, but I do want to say, and, and, and I don't, I'm not, what I mean by that is that we, whatever side you are on, and again, for, I think at least, I'm guessing, um, that some of this is somewhat denominational, right? Kind of like if you're, which side of the aisle that you voted on, if, if you were a congressman or whatever, right? Um, somewhat denominational, but yet it's not. It truly isn't. And I know that from my own personal experience. Um, that it's not just certain denominations believe a certain thing about abortion, right? But yet we all have <coughs> different ways that we are, have prayed about this and have thought about this, right? And so <coughs> I just encourage all of us to do what we can to do whatever it is. Celebrate and keep those laws the way that they've been changed. Um, work towards uh, change in, in uh, reverting back if that's something that you believe is, is biblical. Right? So working on those different things. But before you do anything else, and not just sitting back and going, oh, well, you know, because no, we need to be working for justice, whatever that appears like to you. But the one thing I really encourage you is before you write your congressman, whether you're going to write your congressman and say, gee, thank you so much for doing this, this was the right thing, or whether you say that was the wrong thing, and here's why. And again, I get it, it came from the Supreme Court. Um, but, but still, you know, the, the whole platform. Think about the other side, right? We've talked about this elections, right? Um, gun control, right? There's so many different things that can splinter us and divide us. And for many people, the abortion issue is uh, um, non-negotiable. And I totally understand that and respect that. Um, but we need to make sure that we are also understanding as much as we can 
the other side. Why or why? How could you as a Christian believe that this is okay? Whether whatever it is, it's okay that you repeal. Or is it, how could you see that it's okay that it wouldn't be, right? So I just really encourage all of us to really be thinking about that, of this is such a huge issue. Um, how is it that we, people that we respect, uh, is the same thing, you know, with the whole, I mean, you, you, you can list all the things over the past couple years, right? Starting with COVID, of all the different uh, ways that we've all become, po you know, been polarized from each other. So I just really encourage us all to just really take some time to reflect. I need to learn more about this. I need, to, I need to really read more of my Bible to see where is this coming from, right? Or where is this not coming from, whatever you are doing. And talk to some other people. And, and it's difficult because it's such a personal issue. There are people here that have been uh, uh, drastically affected uh, by abortion. So I understand that it's very, very personal and it's very uh, emotional for people. But again, as much as we're able to, to, to have conversations, it doesn't mean that you need to change your view, whichever it is, at all. But at least that you can try to understand where, where the other person is coming, the other side, if you will, is coming from, and understanding their experiences too. <coughs> so, there are some things that you sh we should not let go, right? There are some things that we need to stand up for and say this was wrong or yes, this is exactly what we've been needing. This is the right thing to do. Um, and we stand up for those things and that's what it's life is about, right? If we just don't stand up for things, why, why, why be a Christian, really, right? I mean, why? Why be an American or in any country if you're not going to passionately care about the people uh, in your community? Uh, or your family, or your country, or your world, right? So sometimes we absolutely are called for that, injustice in whatever form uh, that takes. But then there's also many more times, I believe, that we just have to learn to let things go. I, I, can't, I can't begin to tell you, again, the number of times that I have people that will, that will come up to me with these different slights um, uh, in their family, in their friends, at work, whatever, and again, as a third party, as I hear it, because I have no skin in the game, right? I, I'm not there. I don't know these people. It's not my situation, per se. I care about the person that's talking to me. Um, but I don't have any skin in the game, right? Um, I hear these stories, and I'm like, oh, OK. I mean, did I miss something? Because I am not sure why, you know. Uh, and this again, this is not in counseling or whatever. But, but like with my friends, we'll, you know, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened, you know. And then I'll hear it and I'll go, oh, um, I, I would not have read it that way. Um, I, are you sure they slighted you? Are you sure when they said this, they meant you, you directly, right? But sometimes when we are in the heat of the moment, we can immediately, right, become defensive. We can immediately become, oh, I bet you that that was directed at me, right? Uh, true story, and maybe I've told you this to you before or not, but I was in a quartet for years uh, when I was just in college and out of college. And <coughs> there's four of us, obviously, right? And we would go and do different uh, gigs, you know, around. And one time we had a thing at the Toledo Club. No, the, it's on River Road in Perrysburg. So it's a Toledo Club or a Toledo Yacht Club, I think maybe it's, it's over there. Anyway, so we were supposed to sing. And so we all got there, right? And we kind of meet in the parking lot because we weren't sure we'd never been there before. And there's just the three of us getting kind of dust, getting close to like when we were supposed to be in there performing. Where's the fourth person? Where's the fourth person? We're kind of standing there looking. Finally, we go in. Ah, we're just going to have to do this, you know? And we sang a trio, just the three of us, you know? And then afterwards, we, we yeah, I hope, I hope this, you know, this guy who was one of the singers, you know, is okay. So we, we, we go out, and he was standing out in the parking lot just furious at us. And we're like, what? Did we give you the wrong time? You know, what is it? I was inside the building, and I was flashing the light at you guys. I can't believe that you didn't see me. And we're like, wait, uh, wait a minute. We were in this parking lot, a long building we'd never been in before, and you were flashing a light inside. And you expected us to know that that was you flashing the light that we were supposed to go in this random door. I mean, none of us noticed it, none of us, I mean, in a million years. And he was sure that we had completely just ignored him 
And, that, and so he was so mad that he had listened to us sing, but hadn't come in to sing with us because he was so sure that we had wronged him um, by not follow, not you know, going to, to you know, noticing what he was you know, trying to indicate to us that we had no idea. So it's those kinds of things that we can really get stuck on, right? That we can, we can let fester over and over again. Well, of course that person didn't call me, they called my sister instead and did such and such. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm always this, you know, the last one in line, right? Or all these different scenarios. And again, they could very well be true, right? Maybe whatever it is that's just in your craw, is that the right word? In your, something's in your craw, is that an old term? Um, you know, maybe that whatever it is is not made up or is not unreasonable. Maybe it's legit. You have been wronged by this person or by this situation. Absolutely. But again, the longer we hang on to that, the longer we're not allowing Jesus to lead us through the Spirit, right? If you have any of those things, and again, as you were looking at those lists, maybe you thought of some other things, any of those things that we have <coughs> separate us from God, right? Anger, bitterness, envy, all those things separate us from the Spirit. Now, to conclude today, I'd like to share Ann Landers. Okay, who remembers Ann Landers? Okay, Ann Landers. So she is not a theologian, okay? Let's just get that out there. She's not a theologian. Um, but she, uh, as you know, right, those of us who are older, uh, know that she really did a nice job of, like, offering advice to people, right? And so I, I actually have it written down that in 2014, this was my pastor letter for our newsletter. In 2014, I don't know the month. But anyway, so I would like to just share some of these because they really are scriptural things that are said in a very distinct manner that is really only Ann Landers, those of you who remember Ann Landers. So um, if you like this, I can reprint it again or I can put it in the email or if you just t Google it. Uh, it's 10 Ways of Getting Along with People by Ann Landers. So number one, keep skid chains on your tongue. Keep skid chains on your tongue. Even if one of these is, you, sticks with you, and as you're talking, you go open your mouth, and you go, ah, uh, you know, that's worth it, right? Always say less than you think. This is the one that stuck with me all week long. Always say less than you think. Because everyone at my house teases me that I have no filter, and I just <laughs> think of something, and off I go, which is why I talk to myself like full-time at home as well. Uh, thankfully, I have dogs, but that's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to myself, right? Um, always say less than you think. Cultivate a low persuasive voice, she says. How you say it often counts more than what you say. Number two, make promises sparingly and keep them faithfully, no matter what it costs. Make promises sparingly and keep them faithfully, right? We think of all the covenants that God made with us and that we want to be able to show that same trustworthiness uh, to others. Number three, never let an opportunity pass to say a kind word, a kind and encouraging word to or about somebody. Praise good work, regardless of who did it. If criticism is needed, criticize helpfully and privately, never spitefully and publicly. And again, that's also uh, straight out of the Bible, right? Of pull people aside, and that it is our Christian duty in love to share um, criticism, uh, but it's the way that we do it. Number four, be interested in others, their pursuits, their work, their homes, and their families. Make merry with those who rejoice, with those who weep, mourn. Let everyone you meet, however humble, feel that you regard them as a person of importance. So be interested in others. And that, that also means then that we need to be aware of others, right? not just our own selves, not just our own lives. What is it we're doing? What is it that I'm interested in? What is it that I'm doing with my world? And pretty soon, right, we get these blinders and we completely miss all the people around us that could use our help, that could use our prayers, um, that, that, that could use support in, in whatever it is that they're uh, dealing with in life. Number five, be cheerful. Don't burden or depress those around you by dwelling on your minor aches and pains and small disappointments. Remember, everyone is carrying some kind of a load. 
So that doesn't mean that you can't share things, right? Um, I've been aware of that, though. Um, I've got some arthritis in my thumb. And so every once in a while, I've, this week, I've been saying, oh, man, this, I must have typed too much. Oh, I must have, yeah, oh, man, that, oh, Mark has a torn rotator cuff. Okay, uh, I won't complain quite so much, right? Because I think about that and I go, you know what? There is somebody right here that's in a lot more pain than I am with just a little bit of arthritis, you know, in my thumb. So sometimes it does help. Jim Bostorf always says that to me. You know, I'll say, how you doing? He said, oh, pretty good. You know, there's always somebody that's got it worse off than me, so I'm just grateful. And he said that to me right after his wife, you know, had had her illness, you know, after he lost her, uh, when he was having health issues, right? So when he was carrying some pretty heavy stuff, I didn't even think when he had pneumonia so bad. Remember that time when he was, those of us who have been around a while, he was in, in the hospital with pneumonia, and I remember him saying it to me too. Well, there's people with a lot worse off, and at the time I'm like, uh, maybe, you know. Uh, but, and off he went, and you know, again, I think it's sometimes the attitude, right, that helps, helps get him out of there and, you know, living a life uh, today. So remember that everyone is carrying some kind of a load, right? And that's just so important to remember that. So no matter what is happening, if someone is really like mean to us at work, or there's something like that, you know, it, you really have to stop, right, and go, man, that guy who just pulled in front of me, maybe he legit is in a hurry. Maybe it legit, he just has had something horrible happen, and he just was just so focused on that, you know trying to find the best in people, and how often do we do the opposite, right? Oh, look at that person. He's so rude. He's blah, 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 or she, right, doing all this, and then we get, oh, well, but they're a certain ethnicity, or they're a certain whatever, or oh, look at the car that they're driving, or look at their bumper sticker. They're a certain, you know, whatever, political party, or whatever it is, and we suddenly just take it off in a million different directions instead of Everybody's got a burden to carry, yeah, and, I, and th that person does too. I don't know what it is, but that person does too, and I need to let that go and just let them be, right? Number six, keep an open mind. Discuss, but don't argue. It is a mark of a superior mind to be able to disagree without being disagreeable. It's the mark of a superior mind to be able to disagree without being disagreeable, right? so that we can disagree, but we're not name-calling each other, right? But we're not demeaning each other. We can just disagree, right? And that's okay. That's, to me, I'm going to talk about that a bunch next week, right? Because that's one of the beautiful things about our country, is that we are able to disagree, right? Uh, we're, 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 that's what things are based on, is that we have the freedom to disagree. If you want to go march uh, a year ago for abortion rights, if you want to go march today, you know, you can do that. And, and, you're, and you're called to, I think, peacefully uh, do that. Number eight, be careful of another's feelings. And again, thinking about that as well. And it's all fine and good to say what you feel, but you've got to be aware that for other people, that, that uh, we need to be aware of that. Be careful of other, another's feelings. Oh, did I, I skip one? Sorry, Carol. Let's go back. Number seven, let your virtues, if you have any, speak for themselves. She wrote, if you have any. I, I left that out because I know all of you and I know you have virtues. But she said, let your virtues, if you have any, speak for themselves. Refuse to talk of another's vices. Discourage gossip. It's a waste of valuable time and can be extremely destructive. We all know that, right? Uh, number eight, be careful of another's feelings. Wit and humor at another person's expense are rarely worth it and may hurt when least expected, right? Number nine, pay no attention to ill-natured remarks about you. Remember, the person who carried the message may not be the most accurate reporter in the world. Simply live so that nobody will believe them. That's the part I should have put on the slide because I love that. Simply live so that nobody will believe them, right? If you have people that are talking about you negatively on you know, Facebook or you know, wherever, do you go back and name call them or do you just live your life so that anybody who pulls that up would go, they wouldn't do that. That's not them, right? Number 10, don't be too anxious about the credit due you. Do your best and be patient. Forget about yourself and let others remember. I love that. Forget about yourself, tooting your own horn, making sure everybody knows, you know, whatever. Again, that's biblical, right? That you don't, you're not supposed to be going around telling everybody all the great works that you're doing, right? That you just do them. God knows what they are. And again, others will see that, and they will remember 
um, all the different, the good that you have done. And you don't do it for that reason, but it still kind of helps us, I think, a little bit in encouragement. So I hope that some of these, maybe one of them, uh, just kind of popped in your head of like, whoa, yeah, you know, and like, wow, those really are you know, biblical uh, as she goes through. But the last thing I wanted to share today is uh, an email that I had gotten in 2007. So I have a file of things uh, that I just kind of keep and pull out whenever I uh, uh, am on a certain topic and it seems like it would make sense. So I, I hope you like this. I'm assuming you could also Google this, but again, I can share this. Um, oh, Mark, I got this from you. Thank you. Um, so it's called Sand and Stone. Two friends were walking through the desert. During some point of the journey, they had an argument, and one friend slapped the other one in the face. The one who got slapped was hurt, but without saying anything, wrote in the sand, Today, my best friend slapped me in the face. They kept on walking until they found an oasis where they decided to take a bath. The one who had been slapped got struck got stuck in the mire and started drowning, but the friend saved him. After he recovered from the near drowning, he wrote on a stone, today my best friend saved my life. The friend who had slapped and saved his best friend asked him, after I hurt you, you wrote in the sand, and now you write on a stone, why? The friend replied, when someone hurts us, we should write it down in sand, where winds of forgiveness can erase. Okay, can, sorry, where winds of forgiveness can erase it away. But when someone does something good for us, we must engrave it in stone, where no wind can ever erase it. Learn to write your hurts in the sand and to carve your benefits in stone. I love that. I love that. And again, that's that whole idea of letting things go. Yes, acknowledge that you were hurt for whatever reason. Sometimes it's just a perceived hurt. Sometimes it's an absolute legit, everybody in the room would go, oh my gosh, yes, you, that was a totally unfair or horrible or whatever that happened to you. But learning to write those hurts in the sand where time, right, and the winds of time and forgiveness and God's work in you can erase those from your heart. But keeping those benefits, the things that you're, when you, you, others help you, right? Keeping those, carve those in stone, that Jesus came on this earth for each of you for salvation and God's love for you. And, and, and the, the, the benefits that we have um, that God has given each of us. Carve those in stone so no matter what happens, we can always go back to that gratitude, that mercy, that goodness, that love that God has always shown. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we know that um, our lives are complicated. We know, Lord, that there are, are so many different ways of looking at things. And again, for, for some people, they, they, they think, no, there's not. And then for others, they, they, yes, there, it is. And again, God, we thank you that you've made us each different, although, boy, that can be hard sometimes, that we all have different ideas of, of when it is that we need to fight for justice, when it is that we need to be able to just let things go uh, in our lives if someone has slighted us. So help us, God. Help us to just wrestle through all of that. Help us to be able to always use your love and your mercy uh, as our guide. Help us to be able to, to do that, of, of, of writing our hurts in sand, acknowledging our hurts, but then also being able to, to let those go, God, to let you do your work in our spirits and in our souls so that we can serve you more freely, more joyfully, that we ourselves can, can forgive others and, and show them mercy and kindness. So, God, we thank you all this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. We do come to our time.